Do you like geckos like this one, but you don't have enough space to keep them in a 15, 20, even 30 gallon enclosure? Well, here's a list of seven species that can live in a 10 gallon their entire lives. Let's get into it. Number seven is morning geckos. Now, morning geckos only get to about two to four inches and they are endemic to Hawaii and other regions in the, in the world, but the most common versions are from Hawaii. They are parthenogenic and mostly females. Now, I guess there is some males out there in the wild, but all the ones that have been captive bred and all the ones that you see in reptile expos or on morph market are primarily females. Parthenogenesis means that they don't need a male to reproduce. In simple terms, life uh, finds a way. The cool thing about morning geckos is that they can be housed with dart frogs, although in a 10 gallon, I don't think that that's ideal. If you have that space for 15 or 20 gallons, I think a pair of dart frogs and a pair of morning geckos would go really good together. They can live up to 10 years, and they are omnivorous, which means that they can be on crested gecko diets, and they eat a variety of small animals like tiny crickets or fruit flies or fungus gnats or whatever you feed them. Number six is the fish scale gecko. They're called that because it looks like they literally have fish scales on them and they do fall off. Their defense mechanism when escaping predators is to shed their skin, uh, especially if you have them in your hand and they're trying to squirm away. Because of this, they're not the best species to handle, but they make an amazing display animal. They're primarily insectivorous, but they can eat crested gecko diet. I've seen a couple of videos out there. Number five on the list and one of my favorites is the thick-toed banded gecko. Not bandit, but banded gecko. They're endemic to the Namibian desert in Namibia, or Namib. This makes them one of the more hardy species because their humidity requirements aren't as high as other geckos, like crested geckos or morning geckos. They only need about 40% humidity to thrive, and they're the cutest little thing ever. They only get to about three to four inches, and females can be housed together in pairs, but you should avoid keeping males together because they can get territorial. Number four is ashy geckos. And after morning geckos, I would say that these are the more popular ones on this list. Native to Haiti and the Dominican Republic, these are some of the smallest species, only getting to about 2.7 to 3 inches. They are best kept alone or in a pair. Number three is almost like the ashy geckos. They're the reef geckos and they're part of the same genus, I think. Uh, Spherodactylus, and because of that they can be housed together. Number two on the list, and one of the more visually stunning animals, is the Wigman striped geckos. Native to Aruba, Curacao, Venezuela, and Tobago, these amazing looking geckos grow to about three inches and they are sexually dimorphic, which means that you can tell the females from the males. And from what I know, with the three seconds of studying that I took, before this video, they are primarily insectivorous. Number one on the list, and I think the most beautiful looking gecko on this list, is the electric blue day gecko. Endemic to only a few square miles in the forests of Tanzania, these geckos are definitely not a beginner species. They are best kept as a display animal because just like the fish scale gecko, they can shed their skin to get away from predators or from you wanting to hold them. And they're a lot more delicate when it comes to their husbandry, meaning the temperature, the humidity, and the requirements that are necessary for them to thrive. Comment down below, what was your favorite species of this list? And tell me what gecko you're gonna buy for your 10 gallon tank. And if you wanna know how to make a simple bioactive enclosure like the one behind me, then click this video. Fun fact, did you know that tigers adapted to having orange fur because the deer that they hunt cannot distinguish the colors orange and green? That means that to deer, this is what tigers look like. 